Hi folks and welcome to CNB. I am Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. Thanks for joining us and boy do we have so much excitement for you today. We are taking you all the way across to Las Vegas to the Consumer Electronics Show, the annual CES. Now over the past few years it's become a bit of a motor show. I mean there's lots of excitement, lots to show from the automobile industry. No different this year as well, it's still on. And you've got great displays from the likes of Toyota, BMW, Hyundai. In fact, speaking of Hyundai, Flying taxis, that's the kind of partnership it's looking at with Uber. Pretty exciting for sure. And uh, BMW is showing some rather interesting concepts and takes on this, the i3. The lines between the automobile and technology have been blurring. And this year's consumer electronic show in Las Vegas was the perfect setting to understand what we are talking about. From tech startups to automotive giants, we saw several companies showcase new and innovative smart mobility solutions. The makers of the Fisker Karma finally showcased the much anticipated electric SUV. And it's called the Fisker Ocean. Equipped with an 80 kilowatt per hour battery, the electric SUV offers an all-electric range of up to 480 kilometers on a single charge, capable of doing a 0 to 100 kilometers per hour sprint in about 3 seconds. Yes, the Fisker Ocean is pretty fast. The Ocean will go on sale in late 2021 in the USA followed by a Europe and China launch in 2022. But the big news here is that Fisker has confirmed that India too will be one of the future markets for the ocean and it will possibly arrive on our shows in the next five years. The company in fact is also considering local assembly to cut costs. In the US, the price for the Fisker Ocean will start at around $37,499, which is approximately 27 lakh rupees. The next concept was from Sony. And yes, it was one of the biggest surprises at the show. Sony showcased its first ever electric car concept called the Vision S. The new concept car serves as a platform to showcase Sony's expertise in imaging and sensing technologies along with artificial intelligence, telecommunication and cloud technology. In fact, the car came with a total of 33 sensors along with CMOS image sensors and TOF sensors that recognize and detect people and objects around it. So, a very smart car. While some of the technology has come from other major electronic players such as Blackberry and Bosch, the electric car platform comes from automotive supplier Magna. Sony says that the EV platform can be used to make a variety of vehicle types such as sedans and SUVs. However, there were no technical specifications announced. Mercedes-Benz too showcased an interesting concept. In fact, this one was inspired by the movie Avatar. Touted as the vehicle that can blend harmoniously into its environment, the Vision AVTR, as it was called, employs a bionic, nature-inspired, formal design language and also comes with transparent door shells. The six organic looking segments of the rim are interspersed with blue light guides while all four wheels of the vehicle can move in different directions. The Mercedes-Benz Vision AVTR offers a combined output of more than 469 brake horsepower 
and packs a powerful and compact high voltage 110 kilowatt per hour battery which has a graphene based organic cell chemistry that eliminates rare toxic and expensive earths such as metals. The Vision AVTR enables an electric range of more than 700 kilometers on a single charge and comes with fast charging capability as well. Hyundai and ride hailing company Uber announced a new partnership to develop an urban air mobility solution. The company showcased the first personal air vehicle, a full-scale aircraft concept called the SA-1 at the event. Hyundai is the first automobile company to join the Uber Elevate initiative. While Hyundai will produce and deploy the air vehicles, Uber will provide airspace, support services, connections to ground transportation and customer interfaces to an aerial rideshare network. The concept aircraft is designed for a cruising speed of up to 290 km per hour, a cruising altitude of around 1000 to 2000 feet above the ground and to fly trips of up to 100 km. It is 100% electric, utilizing distributed electric propulsion and during peak hours will require about 5 to 7 minutes to recharge. Another surprise at this year's Consumer Electronics Show came from Amazon's Pavilion, where we saw the 2020 Lamborghini Huracan Evo. Well, the car is the first in the world to come with Alexa as an inbuilt feature. Alexa, open the garage door. Okay. The voice assistant system is integrated into the hardware of the car and will offer complete in-car control to functions such as climate control, interior lighting and even seat heating. Lamborghini will also offer voice activation to get directions, play music, check news and weather among others. The Alexa integration also connects Lamborghini owners to the growing number of connected devices that work with Alexa. With simple voice integration, drivers in the Huracan Evo can control everything from entry gates to thermostats and lights directly from the car. This year, we also saw for the first time in the history of CES an India Pavilion featuring a number of Indian startups, one among which was Mumbai based startup Strom Motors. Introducing its three wheeled electric car, the Strom R3, to the US market. The company only had a scale model of the car, though, instead of the actual prototype. The Strom R3 is designed to redefine personal mobility solutions. The electric vehicle is equipped with a high-efficiency electric motor that produces about 17.4 brake horsepower and develops 48 newton meters of peak torque. It can go for 200 kilometers on a single charge and can be fully charged in three hours. The company says that it will commence pre-bookings for the Strom R3 in India from February 2020. Finally, there was Audi's autonomous concept car, the AIME, which made its US debut. First showcased at the 2019 Shanghai Motor Show, this one is a level 4 autonomous car, which is touted to be a fully connected lounge on wheels for mega cities of tomorrow. The AIME is designed to offer its occupants the convenience of personal space to work watch a movie or simply relax while on the go. The vehicle's AI allows the system to create an interactive experience with the passenger and can read their preferences in terms of climate control and interior lighting and offers suggestions for ideal route guidance. The concept car comes with a 65 kWh battery mated to a synchronous motor on the rear axle which can generate 
170 brake horsepower. It is built on the same MEB platform as the Volkswagen ID and gives us a glimpse into the future of Audi cars. BMW previewed the future car cabins in the form of the i3 Urban Suite. The aim was to create an inviting and relaxing space on wheels. So the car maker took a production spec BMW i3 and completely modified its cabin to mimic the relaxing atmosphere of a boutique hotel, albeit leaving the driver's seat and dashboard untouched. The interior of the car welcomes passengers with a laid-back ambiance equipped with large, comfortable seat with footrest, a screen that flips down from the headliner and a personal sound zone. 20 examples of the BMW i3 Urban Suite which can be summoned using an app are in action on the streets of Las Vegas. Furthermore, going with the green nature of the i3, the company has used recycled materials to design the cabin, especially the fabric, along with certified wood, olive tanned leather and floor mats made from recyclable materials. It's pretty interesting and possibly not at all surprising that every mobility solution being talked about at CES has some form of electrification, a battery, at least a hybrid if not fully electric. Not surprising, like I said, I mean, you've got plug-in hybrids from even Jeep. Didn't think that would happen so soon. It's not just the all-electrics like this one. So please react to the CES and uh, also the fact that it's turning into a motor, or has turned into a motor show over the years. A short break here on CNB. We come back with a look at the updated GLC with the MBUX. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. It's been a tough time in the automotive market here in India. That's something that we've talked about for some time and in the premium space, perhaps even tougher. So credit then to Mercedes-Benz for its fifth year of leadership here in India. And the one thing that keeps everything going, new product. And so an update and a significant one on the GLC, the compact SUV, is then very important for Mercedes-Benz. What does the new car have? Well, I can tell you it has MBUX, which is its new interface. So here is everything you need to know on the new GLC. SUVs are trendsetters. And that's true even in the luxury space. We've seen updates from Audi and BMW, so it was only time when Mercedes-Benz jumped in with its competitor, the GLC. The facelift now takes on the Q5 and even the new gen BMW X3. And there's no doubt that the GLC has been able to cement its position in the segment for all these years. Remember, it first came to India in 2016. But the facelift, when Mercedes thought of bringing out the facelift, it had to be a comprehensive update and obviously up to date as well. So the GLC does get all of that. You see a brand new front grille, you see new bumpers, you see new rear bumpers as well. And of course, new headlamps. The design has changed too. There are LED DRLs, uh, that give it a very signature look and actually remind us of the GLB that uh, that sits between this and the GLA. So a lot of changes have been made to the car, but it still doesn't look aggressive or in your face. And that's because it's all about understated elegance when it comes to the GLC. The side remains identical to the predecessor and there are 19 inch light alloy wheels in gloss black and high sheen finish, which really look good. The aluminium look running boards on the side are mounted at the height of the side skirts and this makes ingress and egress an easy process. There's chrome on the side too and that adds the premium touch. All of this enhances the look of the GLC. 
but it's not exactly a head turner. So a lot might not have changed outside, but there are some big differences on the inside. Uh, but what remains unchanged is this flowing center console. It still is uh, the same as the one on the predecessor. But the first thing to grab your attention is not that, but this 10.25 touchscreen infotainment system. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto on offer. But the biggest change there is that now the GLC gets an embedded SIM. Uh, it is powered by Vodafone, uh, but 4G connectivity in your car available now. This is the first Mercedes-Benz car in India to get one. Uh, so yes, you can actually download the Mercedes Me app and through it, a lot of that now can happen uh, at the touch of a button. So yes, a lot has changed and now it's all about connectivity with that acclaimed MBUX system. The car that we got came with beige upholstery and this really gives you a sense of space inside the car. Of course, it's trendy and therefore features like ambient lighting which has 64 color combinations to offer and wireless phone charging too up part of the package. But would you really be spending much time up front? Now the GLC is mostly a chauffeur driven car. So uh, it always had decent amount of uh, space at the rear. So it, it has good knee room. You can see the sculpted front seats and uh, it has decent headroom too uh, for a person as tall as me. What is interesting is that it gets two C type uh, charging stations as also a 12 volt charging point for the C type now you'll need adapters uh, so yes you'll have to buy them uh, but uh, three charging points is pretty good at the rear uh, there are all of course there is there are the uh, rear AC vents that you get the rest of the entire theme remains the same and then there is this partition that you get this is basically what you get here no nothing inside here as far as uh, the entertainment is concerned you cannot do anything or change anything as far as the entertainment is concerned uh, but what you get now are these sun blinds which are operated manually so you can keep the sun out whenever you're going out that's a very very valuable addition there was of course one concern that we had with the GLC last time around and that was the boot space on offer you had to choose between carrying a spare tire or having space for your bags. Mercedes-Benz doesn't give you that choice anymore. The company has worked on this complaint and now offers 930 litres of boot space which is extendable to 1558 litres with the second row down. The cabin of the new GLC then is mighty impressive. But it doesn't stop there. The virtual assistant of the MBUX system is extremely helpful as we found out. Well, the assistant can understand 32 languages. Sadly, Hindi is not one of them. But then how does it work? Well, here's a demonstration of exactly that. We start by saying, hey Mercedes. How may I help you? I'm hungry. Please select an entry. Well, and basically it shows me a list of all the restaurants they are. So if you're out on the highway and you want some entertainment, well, Mercedes takes care of that too. So here we go. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Tell me a joke. Sorry, my engineers were Germans. <laughs> okay, on a more serious note, I mean, if you want to search for even petrol pumps, well, that's what it does too. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Uh, can you search for the nearest petrol pumps? Please select an entry. There you go. It shows up everything uh, there is to. And let's check one more thing that it can probably do. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Do a barrel roll. I think you're confusing me with someone else. Yeah, I think I am. So that's basically how it works. It's pretty entertaining, isn't it? Uh. 
As for the engine, Mercedes-Benz has done away with the 2.1 litre diesel which was introduced in the GLC back in 2016 and there's a new one under the hood. Now we have been talking about big changes being made to the GLC. The biggest one of course is uh, the engine. It's a 2 litre engine, downgrade from the 2.2 that was on offer earlier. 2 litre 4 cylinder turbo engine on offer, 191 brake horsepower uh, at your disposal and uh, it just all comes together. It's very well put together as a car uh, because every time you put your foot down there is enough and more power to just thrust you ahead. Now the 400 Newton meters of torque comes in at around 1600 rpm and uh, it just feeds you enough power continuously uh, thanks to that 9-speed G-Tronic gearbox. Everything just comes together every single time you are there. Now the suspension uh, of course is the major po talking point because uh, it isn't adaptive suspension. It's the same as before, just a little firmer than before. It takes the undulations on the road with ease. Uh, but yes, there is a, uh, a, a kickback that you get uh, on the, in deeper potholes or deeper surfaces uh, if you try to go in one of them. But as an overall package, the BS BS6 engine uh, the kind of uh, NVH levels that this one has, well, it's all just come together pretty well in this facelift version. It's smooth sailing, frankly. The engine is silent and nothing gets into the cabin, which again is a big improvement over the previous car. There's of course the petrol option available as well, but we didn't get to drive it. Soon maybe. Given what all it has to offer, the GLC diesel starts at 57,75,000 rupees, while the petrol is priced at 52,75,000 rupees. Comparing the diesel model prices to its competitors, the Q5 and X3, the GLC is more expensive. It is about 7 lakh rupees more expensive than the Q5, depending on the variant, and 1 lakh more expensive than the X3, again, depending on the model you choose. Sure, it has a few rough edges, but clearly, Mercedes-Benz has been able to identify the big problem areas, work on it, and make it better. The GLC then is a big leap from what it was and therefore now a true contender in the segment. So that's the new GLC and guess what? I have an even bigger, more exclusive surprise for you on the program next week from Mercedes. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You've got to tune in for that. So that's something I can tease you with for the show next week. And uh, Please promise me you'll wear your seatbelts, please wear your helmets on a bike, and then join us next week for sure.